New York's museum at FIT ventured into the woods for their enchanting exhibition, Fairy Tale Fashion. The exhibit showcased the magical runway concoctions of designers like Alexander McQueen and Marquesa. Beloved stories from Sleeping Beauty to Snow White came to life in the museum's galleries. I really love fairy tales. They had been a subject of fascination for me really throughout my entire life. I really began my work by reading some of the early written versions of tales by people like Charles Perrault, who wrote the version of Cinderella that includes the glass slipper, also the Brothers Grimm, Hans Christian Andersen. And I noticed early on that a lot of these tales have these important references to fashion, even if they're kind of vague, like a gold dress covered in jewels. So I started pulling those ideas out of the tales and thinking, how would I illustrate these using actual fashion objects? I've wanted to include a lot of fairy tale characters, but I've also in some cases used clothing to illustrate a concept, like the idea of the rose as a symbol of love, which works its way into numerous tales. One of the tales I've included is Little Red Riding Hood. We have an example of a red woolen cloak with a hood from the late 18th century. And those were actually fashionable outer garments worn by women during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The Altazara red riding hood is spectacular. I had only seen that piece from the front in runway images, but when it arrived, it's all embellished with Swarovski crystals and it has this gorgeous long train and it's really the ultimate high fashion example of the Red Riding Hood. The sea covers two tales, The Little Mermaid, which is the Hans Christian Andersen tale that we're all familiar with, and also a somewhat lesser known tale called The Swan Maidens. I think particularly in the fashion world, the idea of a mermaid gown has been so important. So I have examples by Charles James. I also have a brand new example by Rodarte, which you see behind me. In Anderson's tale, the little mermaid is so fascinated with the human world and her grandmother says, well, do you realize that your most beautiful asset underwater, your tail, is considered disgusting by humans? And I found that really fascinating because there are so many mermaid dresses in fashion. We clearly don't find mermaids disgusting. Alice in Wonderland is really fascinating of all fairy tales because when it was originally published, it included these gorgeous illustrations by John Tenniel. So I've included a waistcoat that actually has some of those illustrations woven into its pattern um, and also included numerous motifs. There's this kind of iconography of Wonderland that includes things like little golden keys and playing cards and pocket watches. And once those things all come together, they definitely read as Wonderland. What I love about Cinderella is it's truly the ultimate rags to riches tale. I've included four sort of rag style dresses, but they're all high fashion. They're all really beautiful. We perceive this kind of ragged clothing very differently today. I've also, for her ball gowns, included a gorgeous gold couture dress by Christian Dior and a really beautiful silver 18th century inspired ensemble by Vivian Westwood. I've represented Snow White in a really beautiful hand-painted Dolce & Gabbana gown. It's hand-painted with white roses. And the Tom Brown pieces represent rose red. It's this gorgeous um, suit that has this applique of red roses. And my very favorite is a man's suit by Tom Brown that includes a bear-shaped headpiece by Stephen Jones. So the tale uh, shows this transformation. A prince is turned into a bear, and then he, at the end, goes back to being a prince. I was particularly excited about The Wizard of Oz because reading the novelette shows that Dorothy was actually really obsessed with fashion. She changes into her crisp blue and white gingham dress before she heads on her journey to Oz. She gets a new green dress in the Emerald City. She's obsessed by her silver shoes, which of course are represented as red ruby slippers in the film. But there's this real preoccupation with fashion that was fun to trace. 
fashion and fantasy is a really fantastic contrast to a lot of what we're seeing today, which is an emphasis on globalism and functionalism and technology, all of which are hugely important. Of course, we all need clothing that we can wear day to day. But I think having something in contrast to that that shows up so well on the runway and really awes people in fashion editorials is incredibly important.